Today on the show, we're going to be speaking to Tarsia Studios, the folks who are behind the Little Nightmares games and Tear Away Unfolded, which I'm actually playing right now. Did you get it? Roll the tiles. Brought to you by Joel's Daycare. Fighting for your children's future. If any of us even have a future. Hello again, gaming comrades, and welcome to another edition of Games Vault. I'm your host, Chris Johnson, fellow gaming enthusiast, Vault Master, Boffin of Buff, and today our guest will be Andreas Johnson at Tarsia Studios. We'll get the latest in gaming news and lots more. I'm really excited about this week's show. I mean, I'm excited about all of them, of course, but this week our show is sponsored by one of my favourite rugged protagonists, Joel Miller. Hey, I'm Joel Miller from Joel's Daycare. Are you looking for a safe space for your child to remain while you're being lured into an ambush by runners posing as injured humans? Need a cozy and secure quiet room for your infant to nap as you search for a cure for the infected? Hoping your child can still be a kid without the trauma of engaging those nearby unstoppable bloaters? Joel's Daycare is your solution. We offer armed and experienced adult supervision within our fortified care space with the latest in state-of-the-art echolocation shielding. This renders us nearly invisible to raiding groups of runners and clickers, and even if they did find us, we bring the pain. With the most powerful collection of flamethrowers in the Boston area, we got two of them. Financially challenged? Worried about the cost? Hey, who isn't these days? Joel's Daycare offers flexible daily or weekly payment plans. You can even pay for your child's place with ration cards and antibiotics. Joel's Daycare, fighting for your kid's future. They got in. Go, save yourself. I'll hold them off. Come here, you son of a... Ellie! Ellie, get out of here! Shoot! Grab one of the flamethrowers! We have two! Ooh, that's a bit dark. Mind you, a sponsor is a sponsor. And I suppose there's no way to dress up a post-apocalyptic, fungus-filled, cannibal-riddled wasteland, is there? No? All right. Let's get this party started. It's time for... Well, you know what it's time for now if you've been watching this show already. I'm almost afraid to say it. Here we go. It's time for... The Gaming News. Wow. I mean, wow, that's, um, well done. Uh, you, you, you listened to the talk we had then about everything needing to go up a notch. I said, take it to 11. You sort of kept going. You took it to like 22. Um, no, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. It was good. It was very good. It was very, it was very, it was very. It's just, I was expecting like, you know, Super Mario. You gave me Horizon Forbidden West. <laughs> very different energy. So next week, Keep up the good work, but just like a little less work, okay? Something simple, clean. Where was I? Oh yeah, gaming news. Did you know that it's gonna be completely free to play football in 2022? <laughs> what do you mean it already is? You're, oh, you actually go outside and kick a ball around? With who? Friends? How'd you get them? <laughs> Could you tell me? I, I need tips. No, I'm talking about the kind of console kickabouts that used to be called Pro Evolution Soccer. For next year, PES becomes eFootball. And no, that doesn't mean it's exclusively going to feature players from Yorkshire. But most of all, do it for Yorkshire! Konami are regenerating the 26-year-old series into a free-to-play live service model with nine teams confirmed for launch so far, including Juventus, Bayern Munich and Manchester United. It'll be available on all current and last-gen PlayStation and Xbox consoles, plus PC. But unless I can get a greasy pie and an overpriced pint at half-time, colour me not that fussed. Goal! Ubisoft have been busy making clarifications this week about their upcoming releases and in-development titles, not you know. Remember Beyond Good and Evil? 2003 cult classic, flopped in sales but grew in devotion over the PS2 era? There's a sequel on the way! 
which you probably also remember. It was announced in 2008, and again in 2010, and then in 2017. When we got the E3 trailer, it was chattered and rumoured about in the years in between, went from a sequel to a prequel to a where the hell is it quill. But the crumb of info that came out this week was from Ubisoft's chief financial officer, who confirmed that, though it was progressing, Beyond Good and Evil 2 wouldn't likely see release before 2024. Oh, and also the Assassin's Creed live service open world thing is coming along well, but based on the Beyond Good and Evil news, expect it by the time your kids are moving to college. And the biggest news drop this week, of course, or at least the biggest news drop as of this draft of the script, is PC gaming on the go being possible thanks to Valve announcing a brand new handheld console, the Steam Deck. No, that's a Stream Deck. That's Star Trek. That's a big neck. That's Posh and Bex. This thing is a Steam library on the go with prices ranging from $399 to $649 based on how much internal memory you'd like. Most AAA games are apparently supported. PC users can access their Steam library with ease and thanks to cloud saving, you can pull a Nintendo Switch and take your desk adventures onto the bus with you. Now, personally, I'd advise waiting a while to learn more about its limitations before throwing so much cash at a brand new unfamiliar device, but... Pre-order slots for its December 2021 release are filling up rather quickly already, so I'll let you and your savings account do the math. And that's the news. Now you're fully prepped. Tarsia Studios are the team behind such games as Tearaway Unfolded, The Stretchers, Static, and Little Nightmares 1 and 2, to name just a few. Based in Sweden, their CEO generously agreed to join us for a chat in the vault. Here's what happened when I sat down to Chinwag with Andreas Johnson. My first exposure to the work of you guys was through playing Tearaway Unfolded, which was a, a collaborative uh, effort with Media Molecules to translate Tearaway from the PlayStation Vita to the PS4. How did that collaboration come about? It was actually a long time before that, uh, working with Sony. Uh, we started off with uh, uh, Cold Ragnar Kung Fu, and that was a venture collaboration with Sony, but also Mark Healy, one of the founders of Media Molecule, but also one of the creators of Ragnar Kung Fu. And then we went into Little Big Planet and helped Media Molecule with that, doing content, and then later on, like more levels, and then finally our own Little Big Planet game. Well, we had this really nice kind of collaboration between Sony, Media Molecule, and us. Is there is there ever any sense of pressure when you're playing with another studio's toys? Like, if, if say, like with, you know, Sackboy and Little Big Planet as an IP, does it... Do you sort of feel like you have to handle it with kid gloves a little bit? Of course. I mean, you need to uh, both respect uh, the creators, respect the IP, respect the previous games. Not just respect, but you need to understand them, uh, yeah. where the essence come, come from. Uh, but then you also want to add something new. Uh, so it's, it is a tricky balance between, you know, we, we want to go haywire, but uh, we can't really, but we can put, maybe pull something off. Now, you found great acclaim with your most recent duology, Little Nightmares and Little Nightmares 2, which features some of the most pleasantly, I think I can say this, disturbing character designs in modern gaming. Uh, was the genesis of the first game born from actual nightmares, or are you all just super twisted over there? I, th I think it's a combination, to be honest. I mean, uh, we have some people here that are quite in that space of darkness, the characters in, in both the games, you can definitely see that this is uh, com completely fucked up. But that's also what, uh, what I really like about it. It's, it's uh, trying to characterize, uh, you know, evil or evil behavior in, in a physical shape. Uh, do, do you have a particular favorite character design across the two games? From the second game, it's the teacher. The teacher is very real in our world and here's mm. this kind of depiction of a teacher that is <laughs> really creepy and and i mean not not too long ago uh, at least in sweden teachers spank kids <laughs> so it's it's kind of rooted in in what has happened in in real world but it's obviously distorted and and made a, a bit more horrory but yeah i i, I like the teacher Something that uh, Little Nightmares exemplifies, uh, that your studio is brilliant, that you achieve brilliantly, is tone. Uh, do you set out to make players feel a certain way? Uh, uh, from day one, to talk about what, what is the feeling that we want to push here. Uh, or at, at the very least, make sure that there is some feeling 
in there. Um, and tone is, is a huge part of that. Uh, it goes from like the art, the characters to narrative, to how you uh, tell a story to mechanics and it all have has to fit together. Uh, so it's extremely important to us to kind of know from start, this is what feelings that we want to push uh, or hope to push for the player. And that kind of tells us what kind of mechanics we can or cannot have the visual language in the game. And yeah, it's it's a fundamental part of, of uh, making games at, at, at Tassia, at least. Now, if you've watched Games Vault before, you know that we're a little bit daft around here. We like to take the mic. We're very jokey. But for a minute, I'd legitimately like to get sincere with you guys. So let's get sincere, shall we? Okay, like, hi, sorry. Ignore the graphic. <laughs> You put you put that in, it makes it look like a segment that just sort of, you know, artifice of... Never mind. We here at the Games Vault are about celebrating things we love. The good, the bad, the poorly conceived, but well intended. Because this show is for those of us who truly love gaming. And I am one of those people. So today, I decided to set an example. It was my turn to share. This is the very first games console I ever owned. That wasn't a hand-me-down, this was all mine. This is my OG, real, actually buying Game Boy Color. Look at that. The purple translucent back. Beautiful. Um, I got this in 1997. I've fallen and I can't get up. So I would have been six. Uh, I played a heck of a lot on here. In fact, the very first game I owned was Pokemon Red. I know it's a bit cliche, but shush, I had a great time. And in case you're wondering, yes, even as a kid, I did eventually beat the Elite Four. And my standing team, I just booted it up before I had to check, are uh, Dragonite, Charizard, Gengar, Zapdos, Articuno, and Marowak. So, it's an impressive range. Um, but yeah, I played this so much. Second game I ever got for it. There are some of you in the audience watching this going, what is that? It's, respect your elders, all right? This is history. And this is the updated version in color. So don't call me old. Uh, the next game I got was called, and please let me know, please get in touch with us, Games Vault TV, if anyone else has ever heard of this. It's called Super Breakout, a game so important, the title's on the cartridge twice in two different fonts and graphics. <laughs> it's by a studio called Majesco Sales. It's basically just Pong, but you're battling a wall that's at the top. You may scoff, I have logged more hours on this than I probably ever logged on Persona 4 Golden. So, like, don't knock it till you've tried it, okay? <laughs> um, one of my absolute faves, and this is ridiculous, and I had to make sure that there wasn't a battery rotting away inside this, is Pokemon Pinball. And you can tell I grew up with a little sibling, because my initials are hastily scribbled on it in felt tip pen to make sure no one else plays it. But yeah, this was a cartridge that, if you put a AAA battery in, vibrated when you played. It was a terrible game, but I was a kid and there were Pokemon in it. That was enough for me. <laughs> So, that there is my Game Boy Color, which unfortunately, and I did check before we recorded today, doesn't go past the title screen anymore. It's corrupted. Something has worn down in it. Which would be a shame if it weren't for the fact that I've still got my Game Boy Advance and it still works. So, <laughs> there you are! Something old for the Games Vault. So when we appeal to you to send us photos or videos of your favourite gaming accessory, device or even game, we mean it. We want to fill this vault with them. It can be anything gaming related at all. Power Glove even. So send it in so we can share it in all its magnificence. Share the love, fellow gamers. Let's bask together in the glory that is the gaming experience. Time now for 7th Planet Pick. To play along with us, please welcome back Andreas Johnson from Tarsia Studios. <laughs> Andreas, I'm delighted to tell you that you are on a intergalactic flight into the deepest reaches of space. It's pretty cool. Not many people have had the chance. And uh, while you're out there, you're going to need to occupy your time. So, what game do you take with you to fill all that free time aboard the spaceship? I, I really like the latest uh, game from Housemark on PS5, Returnal. So I've tried, I, I played it a lot the, the last uh, month. I, I'm. I, I think I'm. I, I'm okay, but I'm not gonna 
Um, but it's there's something there that I really like, the kind of endless loop of things trying to get further and further. And they've kind of masterfully combined that with the arcade feeling. Okay, so my second container is Dreams. So that's from Media Molecule, yeah. uh, where I can just create my own games. Yes, Dreams. It is Dreams is the game. That's the game that I would bring. So I can make my own games. Good news for wanting more time to play and create games in Dreams. Bad news for the mission, your ship has been pulled into the tractor beam-like gravity of the seventh planet. You have crash-landed on this world. You're unable to leave. Who do you send a distress signal for help to? Who do you want to come and save you? Real or fictional? I mean, I, I would love someone that is... I, I love these kind of space cowboys. Uh, so, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, the guy there with his... He can come and, and uh, save me. That, that I think that would... He would probably be able to do it. Indiana owns space person, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Serenity. What, what's his name? Yeah, uh, Mal. Uh, Captain Mal uh, Reynolds. He's a proper from... space cowboy. You've got to pick one, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, all right, so Star, Star Lord definitely because of the music. And conveniently, he has a video <laughs> game coming out at some point this year, so yay! <laughs> Star Lord got your coordinates, but the Milano, his ship has been pulled down into the debris as well. You're both stranded on the seventh planet. You and Star-Lord now have to use the games you've picked to teach you how to survive. It's pretty good you picked a, a game about like terraforming and surviving on a planet's surface and creation, because <laughs> you could have picked like Tetris. I'm not sure how that's gonna <laughs> help you survive. Survival is, is at, at its core, isn't that about like joining in, helping each other, caring about each other? I think Dreams is quite good there that we can find common ground in being creative, trying our theories together in dreams. How the hell do we get out of here? So I think that's, uh, I think that's, that, that would be a common, good common ground for me and, and Star Lord <laughs> to, to sit in dreams and create our kind of practical solutions to our crazy theories of how to, to escape. Runners, stalkers, and clickers, oh my. <laughs> good times. All gone now. Hi, I'm Joel Miller. These are scary times to be a kid, but we at Joel's Daycare take the fear out of Feral. We're a fully qualified childcare facility dedicated to providing your little ones with supervision, fun, and learning, all within a safe and heavily fortified compound. Aside from history classes about the days before contamination, we offer free swimming lessons, oops, ah! bottle and brick throwing classes, and even stealth and listen modules for the little ones, all at no additional cost. Our classroom areas are fungus-free and fully reinforced, so you can get on with your foraging without the anxiety of wondering if your child is safe. And you won't be leaving your child with no stranger, neither. I'm a well-established pseudo-father figure who has no qualms about doing whatever it takes to keep your kids safe. And that's exactly the kind of guy you need. Just ask my sort of daughter, Ellie. I'll level with you. The future is grim. But at least we can help make sure your kids have one. A future, that is. Joel's Daycare. We got your kids back. Unless they're infected. Well, we're out of time for another week, folks. Special thanks to the team at Tarsia Studios for chatting to us and taking part in the 7th Planet Pick. We love you. Don't forget to take part in our snake competition as well. And get started with your own righteous quest to attain the Golden Turd. You are the reason we exist, that's right, you complete us. So if you have gaming ideas, suggestions for future guests, or just want to reach out, you know, without crossing the line into stalking, please do get in touch. And send us your gaming gear videos too. Don't make me get all weepy over my Game Boy Color again, I had a hard enough time holding it together. You can find us at Games Vault TV on Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, and of course, Nexi.tv. Until then, I'm Chris Johnson, sealing the vault for another week. Game on. Yeah.